Hey guys, so today we are looking at this multi-agent architecture that Langchain calls the supervisor. And in this architecture, we have a supervisor agent that is connected to multiple sub-agents which are specialized in a particular domain. The supervisor is able to break down tasks intelligently and delegate them to designated agents. And it's able to do it either by sequentially calling these agents one by one or calling them at the same time to process the request parallelly, depending upon the task at hand. And we'll see both of these examples in just a minute. So to demonstrate this architecture, I have these two examples prepared, where in one of them, I built a system using this architecture. And in the second example, we have the same exact system built without using this architecture. So I'm gonna first demonstrate the system with the architecture. And once I'm done, we are gonna talk about the differences between these two which are actually tremendous so in my opinion i think it's definitely something you should know especially if you work with ai agents specifically but this is also something you should know if you are someone who is building ai based workflows in any way since this is a foundational concept related to llms in general but anyway without wasting any more time let's just get to the demo all right so let's first quickly take a look at what we have here as you can see we have a supervisor agent and then we have three sub agents that are connected to it, just like what we had in the diagram, right? The first agent we have is an email agent, which is only responsible for Gmail based queries. Then we have a context agent. In this case, I posted two code tools to simulate retrieval of context from different platforms. In this case, we have CRM context, and then we have Slack context, which might not even make sense in a real world scenario. But like I said, just to simulate complexity, the only contact here that is real in the sense that the email is legit it belongs to John Doe, right? Where the email points to my own old email. And this is what we're going to be using in this example. Then the next agent we have here is the calendar agent. And by now you can already imagine that this agent is only responsible for calendar based queries, right? With that, we have our architecture here so the supervisor agent here knows how to interact with these sub agents in order to complete a user request and with that we can start with our example but before we do i want to let you know that i'm going to be uploading this workflow template here to my school community which is completely free by the way and we are at 2k members at the moment once you're in you can just head to the youtube video and resources section where you can find all the resources that i show in my videos in this case the last video i posted was on mcp which i also shared the workflow template here right it's a json file and what you'll have to do is just download this file here and then go back to the workflow that you want to import this template into and you'll see this three dotted button here just click on that and then click on import from file and once you select the file that you just downloaded you would have imported the workflow and that's how simple it is all right so let's spin up a chat window to chat with our supervisor agent right and i'm gonna tell it to please send an email to john and let him or and ask him if he is okay for a dinner meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m for an hour okay i'm gonna click on that and let's see what happens then you can see that it first hits the contacts agent to get the email for john right since we don't specify to it here it's processing it now it got the information for his email and after that the supervisor agent passed it to the email agent to send off the email and what we see here is the sequential way of processing a request from the one we discussed earlier where we have two kinds sequential and parallel in this case we went with sequential since we first hit the contact agent and then we hit the email agent to send off the email and you can see here it says i have sent an email to john do asking if he's available let's take a look at if that's the case i'm gonna go to my inbox here and we can see that indeed it did send us an email and i'm just gonna go ahead and respond with one of these templates here i'm gonna say yes i'm available and i'm gonna click on respond and go back to the agent and ask it the follow-up question and say did john respond okay did john respond like this and with the hope that we did receive the email i'm gonna click on enter again and let's see what happens this time we have our supervisor processing the request that hits the contact agent again to get the email for john just like it was instructed and now it's processing the email and here we can see that john replied and he's available for the dinner meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m which is perfect right now i'm gonna tell it to do two things i'm gonna say great by the way the comma key is not working guys so i'm gonna use full stop in its place so uh please don't mind me and let's see what it does this time again the supervisor processes it 
goes to the contacts agent as it, it was instructed, right? So the contacts agent returns the contacts and you can see how this time we use the parallel processing method where it hit both of these agents at the same time. So they are both parallelly processing the request. The calendar agent already did its thing. Now we're waiting for the email agent to also do its thing. Let's see what happens. All right, guys. So it says the dinner meeting with John has been scheduled for tomorrow at 7 p.m and he has been tagged in the event. Let's take a look at if that's the case. And we can see here that that indeed is the case. We have a meeting set for tomorrow at 7 p.m. called Dinner Meeting with John Doe. And you can see the guest here is, of course, the real owner of this email is me. So it's my name here, but you can see that it used the correct email, right? With that, let's check if it was able to respond to our email. And you can see that it not only created a new email and sent it to John or to us, it actually responded to John's email and said, Hi, John, the dinner meeting has been scheduled for tomorrow at 7 p.m. Best regards, Mahmoud. Again, this format could be fixed. So it was able to do what we told it to do, right? And that's pretty much this architecture here. We saw how we have a supervisor agent that intelligently delegates tasks to its sub agents, right? In this case, we had a contact agent that was always called by our supervisor to get the contact for a particular user, in this case, John. Then it used the email agent to send an email or to see if John responded to our email and then created a calendar using the calendar agent. And at one point it used both of these agents parallelly. So we had two agents working at the same time to process different parts of that task, which they were able to do successfully. And just a heads up, by the way, I didn't really work on the prompt since this is just an example to demonstrate the architecture to you guys. And one more thing you guys might be wondering that I forgot to explain is what's really going on here since it's hitting these agents, but we don't see these agents doing anything, right? The reason is because I added these here just to help you visualize what's going on under the hood. Otherwise, what's happening is we are using this tool to point to the actual instances of these agents. For instance, in this case, we have a calendar agent tool. What it does is it points to a workflow that is called calendar agent and it's over here, right? Which contains the actual instance of this agent. And we have the same thing for context agent and then for the email agent. So that's what was happening under the hood in reality. But like I said, I added here to visualize what's going on, right? Now let's take a look at the benefits of this architecture. And for this, let's take a look at the diagram again. And underneath we have this benefits section here. Let's start looking at each of them one by one. And I'll be elaborating on each of them as we go. So the first one is specialization and separation of concerns each agent is responsible for a specific task reducing the scope of responsibility leading to better accuracy basically saying that instead of dumping everything into a single agent what we do is we create specialized agents that are only responsible in a particular domain and what it means by separation of concerns is that each of these agents are only concerned about what they are responsible for doing right the calendar agent does not care about how to send an email or how to manage contacts. It only solely cares about how to handle calendar based queries. And it's the exact same thing for these other two agents here, where they're only concerned about whatever domain they are specialized in. So that's what's meant by separation of concerns, right? And when you think about it, there's a lot of things going on, fundamentally speaking, because here we have an agent that's been given all sorts of things from all sorts of domains. Like we have three different domains that this agent has to focus on, which you can imagine makes it much more difficult for this agent to perform accurately and not make mistakes. Because when we pa when we pass in these tools like this in the way that we see it, what's going under the hood is a much more different story where each of these gets added into the context window for the agent to have to process, right? Each tools have its own description, own input schema and all sorts of things that this agent has to understand before deciding on which tools to use. Adding different domains to it is just making it worse. Adding more options to it is just, again, making it more difficult for the agent to decide more accurately. Apart from that, we have prompt engineering for these kind of agents, as you can imagine, gets much more difficult. This is an example I created on how it might look like for an agent that's supposed to handle all sorts of things, like trying to at least get it to do it uh, consistently right and this is a simple example normally we can have things like examples to allow the agent to understand how it should behave and it just makes it more difficult for both the developer that maintains this agent and for the agent itself to perform accurately and not make mistakes so this is one of the problems that this architecture tackles and it does it really well in my opinion 
So with that, let's continue with the second item in the list, which is reusability. Agents can be reused across different workflows and contexts without duplication. And this is also very true. I actually demonstrated it in this example, but I haven't yet explained. So we have this context agent, right? And if you notice, again, let me just pull this down to so that we can see it better. If you notice what we have here is the context agent and this context agent is being used by both the supervisor agent and the email agent, right? I added this just to demonstrate that we can reuse this in different parts of the workflow or even in different workflows itself, like where it could be a part of a different project. And the good part about this is because we are specializing these agents, what's happening is they're only focused on a single unit of work. They are not focused in multiple different domains. So it makes it easier for us to reuse them in also different projects. So you can just prepare these agents once and just plug and play them in different projects if you'd like. We also did it here. The email agent is also able to call the context agent to make sure it has the right contact information. But in cases where we have an agent that has all these responsibilities, imagine in another project or even in this project for this email agent here, for instance, right? If that project just requires the contact information, you don't want to give it this whole agent as that would be an overkill. Like it's only concerned or it's only interested in these two things where it's trying to get the CRM based contacts and Slack based contacts. And the project does not want anything to do with handling calendars or Gmail, right? So this is what it means by reusability. And then we have improved transparency and debugging process, which is really true. So it becomes easier to identify and resolve issues because the overall task is divided into smaller units handled by multiple agents. So what it means here is that as we break down the responsibilities for these agents, we are also essentially breaking down the problems themselves into simpler units. Because if a problem occurs in this personal assistant, the first problem is having to figure out where exactly this problem occurred. Like you'll have to go into this context trying to understand what caused the problem. Let's say in a case where it tried to create a calendar event and then send an email. You would have to go through this whole prompt here and understand what to change in order to fix these two step problem. And chances are because these are mangled in together where the logic is intertwined, a fixing one thing here might break something uh, in the bottom and it's just going to make it much more complicated for the developer again. And this is what this architecture here solves really well. Now, imagine if the same problem occurred in this architecture here, we would be able to easily pinpoint where the problem arises in by looking at which agent is causing the issue, right? And then we would just go in there and fix it directly wherever it arises in. So that's how this architecture helps us with debugging and improving transparency and the last one here is parallelization being able to execute tasks parallelly and this is what we saw when we wanted to send an email and also schedule an event with john where the agent called both of these agents, the calendar agent and the email agent to complete the request. The calendar agent was scheduling an event while on the other side, simultaneously, the email agent was preparing the email to send to him instead of having to do it sequentially. So the supervisor agent can decide on cases where it wants to call these agents one by one, or like in this case, call them at the same time to increase the speed of the whole process. All right, guys, with that, we are done with this video. I hope you're able to to get value from this video and understand why it's important to implement these kind of architectures into our workflows. Again, it doesn't even have to be for AI agents, right? These concepts fundamentally apply to anything related to AI in terms of LLMs in general, right? Even if you have a workflow with standard predefined steps, you can still improve their performance by limiting the scope of responsibility they each have. And I also showed that in my previous video with effective agents anyway. So you can check that out if you haven't yet. It's a really good video in my opinion. It's actually my most watched video. Anyway, guys, again, you can also join my school community to get access to the resources shown in this video and all the other videos, right? That video for the effective agents is here, by the way. So you can just come over here and download this workflow here. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment as it really helps me reach out to more people with my videos. So thank you in advance. Bye.